Good evening and welcome to the season finale of the Seth Joyner Show presented by Bankroll. There were high expectations leading into Super Bowl 57 and Philly fans looked at the game as a foregone conclusion of a W. See, listen, Jalen Hurts played the game of his young career, cementing his ascendance as the franchise quarterback in the National Football League. And while he and the offense were up to the task, the defense and special teams and coaches, in my opinion, were less than ready or capable of adjusting to the biggest moment of their young coaching lives. After dominating the first half of the game, Andy Reid, the master, schooled the student on preparation and adjustments. It's time for my bankroll breakdown. First off, let me say the National Football League dropped the ball on the biggest stage possible. The field conditions was one of the most egregious mistakes of the night. How, in the most important game of the season, do you experiment with a field in the Super Bowl of all games? I'll agree, both teams had to endure the slick conditions, but the team with the most to lose was the Eagles' defense. What made this defense so vaunted is the fearless pass rush, and that weapon was all but nullified because Reddick, Sweat, Graham, and the interior guys couldn't turn the corner without slipping all game long. But I digress. Okay, let's get into the game. Hurts and the offense came out on fire. After the Chiefs won the toss and deferred, they marched 11 plays, 75 yards, culminating in a one-yard Jalen Hurts touchdown. The Chiefs followed up with a six-place, 75-yard touchdown drive of their own, with Travis Kelsey beating the Cowboys. I expected Mahomes and the Chiefs to respond being the veteran team that they are, but Hurts continued to impress, rising up to the challenge versus his opponent each and every possession. After hooking up with A.J. Brown on a 45-yard TD strike, Hurts suffered his only big mistake of the game. He lost a fumble, which is picked up in return for a touchdown by Kansas City linebacker Nick Bolton. I was focused on Hurts to see how and if a mistake of that magnitude would affect his psyche. Impressively, it didn't phase him at all. He bounced back with another TD drive. This one, 12 plays, 75 yards again, ending in another Jalen Hurts rushing touchdown for four yards. It was the Jalen Hurts show in the first half. For some reason or other, the Eagles just couldn't get their run game going as in previous games. It was not for a lack of trying. They ran the ball 22 times for 87 yards, primarily on the legs of Jalen Hurts in the first half. He also was 17 for 22 for 183 yards and one touchdown passing. As time expired on the first half, the Eagles were looking to extend their lead to 14. But a Quez Watkins deep ball drop and expiring time forced a Jake Elliott field goal, and the Birds took a halftime lead of 14 to 24. I'd be remiss if I didn't comment on the special teams right here. All year, we knew that this was the weak link of this football team. At one point, they seemed to have gotten it together, but they were still less than special. With the Eagles trailing by one and having just gone three and out, recently activated punter Aaron Sipos kicked a wobbly 38-yard punt with Kadarius Tony returning it 65 yards, setting up the Chiefs in the Eagles' red zone, resulting in a Sky Moore four-yard touchdown pass that pushed the lead to eight. Now, on the defensive side, the Eagles seemed to have full control of the game. The Chiefs only had four possessions in the first half. You guys remember last week I talked about minimizing the amount of possessions that you gave Patrick Mahomes. He only had eight for the game. He only managed a Travis Kelsey touchdown, a miss Harrison Bucker 42-yard field goal, and two punts on 128 yards of total offense in the first half. For Patrick Mahomes, that was. Then an extended halftime, 29 minutes opposed to the normal 12 minutes, gave Andy Reid and staff time to make some much-needed adjustments, and Mahomes came out and went to work. On the first drive of the second half, he led his team 10 plays, 75 yards, ending in an Isaiah Pacheco one-yard touchdown run that drew the Chiefs within three. The Eagles' defense after halftime looked lethargic. The Chiefs' first adjustment was to establish the run game, and Pacheco provided a major spark. Once the run game was established, Patrick Mahomes became surgical in the passing game. While his numbers were less than eye-popping, he made timely passes and the in-and-out breaking routes gave the Eagles fits. The combination of Pacheco running, the smart adjustments by Reed, the Eagles' defense looked frustrated. 
They couldn't control the run, nor could they get pressure on Mahomes on that slippery field. And before you knew it, the comeback was complete. The Chiefs scored on three straight possessions in the second half and found themselves up by eight. But Hurts led the Eagles eight plays, 75 yards, scoring again on a two-yard run and completing the tie with a quarterback sweep. Now, the Eagles just needed the defense to get one stop. Get them the ball back. But Mahomes went on a 12-play, 66-yard drive. That was aided by a huge holding call on James Bradbury on a third down play that would have forced Kansas City into a field goal, giving the Eagles the ball with a minute and 40-plus seconds remaining. That essentially ended the game. Bucker came in and nailed a 27-yard field goal that sent the city of brotherly love into the offseason, feeling the agony of defeat. That's my bankroll game summary. After this break, I'll dive a bit deeper into the Eagles' defeat. Bankroll at 19th and Chestnut, Center City, Philadelphia, redefines the sports bar experience for the modern invested fan. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership, specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! This car is a steal. Hey Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> Is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner, and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Former Eagles linebacker Seth Jordan here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For over 20 years now, Strategic Sports Marketing has been a leader in the sports industry. With deep relationship among athletes and companies of all sizes, SSM knows what it takes to build effective partnerships. They've been helping me for 15 years now. From speaking engagements and endorsement deals to special guest appearances and much more, no budget is considered too small. And check out SSM's sister company at sportsballshop.com where you'll find everything for your gift giving needs. Keep an eye out for upcoming coupon codes exclusive to the Seth Joyner Show. Welcome back. My heart breaks for the city of Philadelphia, the fans, and the players. What an unexpected, incredible ride this team took us all on. They just fell a bit short. Here are my game observations offensively in the future outlook. It's hard to fathom the offense doing more than it did to become champs. Jalen Hurts accounted for 374 of the 417 total yards on offense. The way they ran the football through the divisional in the championship round, I thought the plan would be to pound the Chiefs into submission. It's hard to argue that they didn't try, by the way, according to the numbers, but Hurts accounted for 17 carries for 70 yards, and Sanders, Gainwell, and Scott totaled 17 carries for 45 yards. Not the output that I or anyone else was hoping for on the ground. Although the Birds posted 35 points, the O-line just could never establish dominance in the running game. 
After so much success in the first half, I was perplexed at the offense's inability to sustain drives and keep Mahomes off the field in the second half. After six first-half possessions, they could only manage four in the second half alone. Although by no fault of their own, the defense just couldn't get Mahomes off the field. He couldn't get a stop. In similar fashion of how KC couldn't stop the Eagles in the first half. The most promising drive of the half was a 17-play, 60-yard drive that was stalled by some penalties and yet some spectacular third-down throws and catches between Hurts and Goddard, but ultimately ended in the three points rather than the seven they desperately needed. The rookie Kansas City DBs got up and challenged our wide receivers at the line of scrimmage, and although they never sacked Hurts, they had him on the run to his left primarily by design. It seemed to me that the combo of a 10-point lead made the coaches a bit complacent. The Eagles ran 45 plays in the first half alone to only 27 in the entire second half. Granted, the inability and failure of the defense in the second half to get off the field contributed to the lack of offensive production. On the defensive side of the ball, I hate to say I told you so. I am aggressive by nature and by thinking as far as football is concerned. I simply believe that pressure is a difference maker in the game of football. I took a lot of heat this season because of my stance against Jonathan Gannon and his lack of, of aggressiveness. The defense was ranked second overall and set a new franchise record for sacks with 70 during the regular season and dominated the lion's share of their opponents. They spoiled us with an average of five to six sacks over the last seven games. So why would we think they not dominate as they have? Sometimes there's this one team that simply matches up with you better than any other team that you play all year. Jonathan Gannon has relied on a bend but don't break philosophy all season long and the belief that the four-man rush can get there and get it done all year. Listen, it's worked all season long. Well, the Chiefs offensive line was that anomaly. They couldn't get home, be it because of the field conditions or superior play, but the Chiefs offensive line simply handled our defensive line. They couldn't get near Mahomes. This is where the, a practice of applying pressure comes into focus. Listen, I don't advocate for a blitz or pressure happy approach, but there are in every game a situation when you will need to blitz and apply pressure. The Eagles blitz twice in between the 20s all game long and twice in the red zone, which Mahomes made them pay for. Why wait until you've given up all your real estate easily to then turn aggressive? I get Gannon's fear at times. On multiple occasions this season, he's tried to be more aggressive, but his players have made mistakes. But attention to detail and accountability should have been able to fix that. You cannot be fearful in moments like the Super Bowl of all times, when courage and braveness is most needed. The other shortcoming was Gannon's inability to adjust on the fly. When Reed made the decision to establish the run game, the Eagles had no response. It seemed like C.J. Gardner-Johnson was the only guy that played with any kind of fire at that time. They just simply got gashed. It's also unconscionable to not have a better plan for how to control Kelsey in the first half, a combination of coverages, and also adjustments for the two TD passes off the same route on opposite sides in the second half. Listen, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. There should have been some conversation that went on to make that adjustment. What type of conversation was really going on on the sideline between the players, the DB coach, and Jonathan Gannon after Slay got beat by Tony the first time? To come back three minutes later and give up another touchdown the same exact way, the same play, is unacceptable. The worst part is that the Kansas City Chiefs took the play out of Doug Peterson's playbook. His Jacksonville Jaguars offense scored on that same exact play early in the season. Big Red and Steve Spagnuolo completely flipped the script in the second half and schooled Nick Sirianni and Jonathan Gannon on the fact that it's a 60-minute game and that in big games like this, it's a game of adjustments and key breaking. The major difference in the game was that the Eagles coaches played checkers versus a Chiefs coach playing checkers in the first half then switching to chess in the second half. Coming up, we'll take a look at the massive changes the Eagles will face next season.
Special thanks to our show sponsor, Bridgeview Partners. Bridgeview Partners specialize in IT service management and helping businesses separate from their competition. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com and let them know that Seth Joyner sent you. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> Is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner, and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> For over 20 years now, Strategic Sports Marketing has been a leader in the sports industry. With deep relationship among athletes and companies of all sizes, SSM knows what it takes to build effective partnerships. They've been helping me for 15 years now. From speaking engagements and endorsement deals to special guest appearances and much more, no budget is considered too small. And check out SSM's sister company at sportsballshop.com where you'll find everything for your gift-giving needs. Keep an eye out for upcoming coupon codes exclusive to the Seth Joyner Show. Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandrakia and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name, Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Welcome back. The Eagles took us on an unforgettable run this season. I thought that they need at least one more year of development to be in a position to challenge for a Super Bowl. But Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni and this Eagles football team made huge strides. The most pressing need for this team is the extending of Jalen Hurts while maintaining the offensive weapons they now have around him. The Eagles defense will suffer. But if indeed this is a quarterback driven league, and quarterbacks are the highest paid players, how we will need to continue to keep Hurts flush with weapons around him. The market value for franchise quarterbacks is in the range of 40 to $50 million per year. I hear all the rhetoric, oh, he should take a team discount, he should sign a three-year deal, et cetera, et cetera. I'll pose this question to you. If Jalen Hurts was your son, or you were Jalen Hurts, would you take a team discount? Would you do the team a solid by taking less money than market value? He's had to do it the hard way, overcome the haters, the doubters, the prognosticators, and he deserves to be paid for the role he's asked to fill. Next, I'm hoping, beyond hope, that Jason Kelsey has another run left in him. Although his heir apparent isn't waiting, the birds have depth on the offensive line. Next, on offense, they need to find a bona fide number three wide receiver. The Quez Watkins experiment has run its course. Either he's disinterested in the game of football or the lack of involvement has caused him to lose focus. But they need a guy who has speed that can stretch the field and make plays and be ready when his numbers call. With reliable hands, of course. Lastly, I thought Miles Sanders had a heck of a contract year. But the lack of usage as the season went on and his regression in the Super Bowl leads me to believe that he's not a part of the Eagles' long-term plans. I'd allow him to shop himself and see what the market bears. 
he may find his best value is still here right in front. The defense is going to be much more complicated in my opinion. I think the most important player on the defense that Howie needs to get resigned is C.J. Gardner Johnson. He is a game changer for sure. Although I'd love to see James Bradbury back, he's going to command a pretty hefty paycheck in this offseason. He's going to be an expensive commodity at the cornerback. T.J. Edwards will be another interesting free agent. I can see Howie trying to re-sign him, but ultimately having to allow him to shop himself as well. Kazir White was a major disappointment for me. As you guys remember, back in the preseason, I projected him to be a Pro Bowl player as the way, the way he played during the preseason. The Kobe Dean, it's your time. Next up, on the D-line where the biggest changes will come, in my opinion, Brandon Graham is a fan favorite. Unless he takes a hometown discount to stay, I see them moving on. Even more so, Fletcher Cox and Dominican Sue and Linville Joseph are probably gone. And depending upon his price, Javon Hargrave will probably be gone as well. It's time for Milton Williams and Jordan Davis to step up big time. Although additional veteran help will be necessary, you never know. One or two of these vets could find themselves right back here next season. I have no words. If you consider the draft capital and the maneuverability of Howie Roseman and the job he's done rebuilding this roster in two years, he will work his cap magic to have and make this team competitive next year again. With the 10th and 31st overall picks in this year's draft, the free agent market, and the increase of veterans that don't get signed in free agencies that will become available in the summer, and an increase in cap space of 12 to $20 million, I expect for this team to look very different, but still be very competitive. One more break before we put a bow on this 2022 season and Super Bowl run. This segment is sponsored by Davis Honda. I drive a Davis Honda, and you should too. Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact a very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership, specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandrakia and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name. Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. Former Eagles linebacker Seth joining here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear, kitchens, baths, drywall, and roof. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner, and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Special thanks to Strategic Sports Marketing. They've taken care of me for 15 years. 
they'll do the same for you. Welcome back. Although the Birds, Phillies, and Union came up short, we had a shot. I'm excited about the prospects of the Eagles' future. They now have a proven franchise quarterback, wide receiver 1A and wide receiver 1B. Stability and depth on the old line and a top three tight end that just needs enough targets to allow him to climb the hill to be one of the best in the game. The biggest question on the offense will be who replaces Miles Sanders? whether Kelsey retires, and can you find a wide receiver number three to solidify the wide receiver's corpse? As crazy as it sounds, I believe that Howie needs to draft a quarterback mid-round, yes, mid-round, who possesses similar skill sets as Jalen Hurts, one whom they can develop and groom to be the number one backup. Jalen Hurts will get hurt or nicked up again. It's not a matter of if, but when. His backup needs to be able to pick up every facet of this offense, RPO, read option, rollout, scramble, etc. Having to play Gardner Minshew for two games is evident that a backup with similar skill sets to Jalen Hurts puts this offense at a distinct disadvantage if you don't have one. With the departure of Shane Steichen, what's Nick Sirianni's next move? Does he reassume play calling or do you look for a play caller on the outside? On the defensive side of the ball, the question is, is Gannon back or gone? I get the sense that he's either hired in Arizona or goes to Indy with Shane Steichen. Who will assume the D.C. duties will be an interesting thing to see? Most of us hope that Vic Fangio would step in. But with the birds in the playoffs and no guarantee that Gannon was going to be gone, he took the Miami D.C. job. That makes things very interesting and intriguing. Will they promote from within, or is there someone on their radar who they can bring in who runs a similar scheme? It's going to be hard to duplicate this year's production with new faces and potentially an entire new scheme. No doubt, after tasting the Super Bowl, this team should be hungry as ever to get back and get the trophy. That's the show for this season. Thank you for tuning in and being part of the Seth Joyner Show. Tune in to the Seth Joyner Show podcast once the new 2023 fiscal NFL season begins on YouTube. And God willing, I look forward to journeying with you again through the 2023 Philadelphia Eagles season. Fly, Eagles, fly. Until then, love and blessings to you, Philadelphia, and good night.